coming and from me <clears throat> welcome in 2023 <clears throat> it's been a while since i made a podcast but um, i am well and i'm extremely excited about this year um december we went down to cape town to visit our son and the little grandson and his lovely wife and we had such a fantastic time in cape town and um, while I was there, <clears throat> I sort of puzzled out in my mind how I'm going to run in 2023. And um, to get to everything and to do it properly, I, I have posted about it as well. I said that I would do my physical slow Saturday social at Elisa's house. We're going to have that on the second Saturday of each month. Um, if you are in the Pretoria area and you want to attend, contact me privately. I'm not going to give her details um, for that. That wouldn't be fair. And then the Slow Saturday podcast, like this one, is going to happen on the third Saturday of every month. Then I know I can get to everything. Okay, so earlier this week, I shared a post, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> in the Ilona Slow Life Creations Facebook group about Michelle Obama's knitting hobby. And it got me thinking, you know, many people still have this weird idea that if you knit or crochet, you must be a housewife. They connect knitting and crochet, or for that matter, any, any craft like quilting, whatever, you must be a housewife. Note the gender, wife. You're a female and you're a stay-at-home mom or wife or whatever. And that is so wrong, you know. I can... Some people are made, they have this inborn aptitude to care, to nurture, to feed, to clean. And I absolutely admire that because I don't have that. Um, I think... Being a stay-at-home person, not wife, not woman, not mom, being a stay-at-home person is, it's, it's, an, it's a career just like any other career. Some people have this inborn ability to do it excellently. And I'm not one of them. Neither are my children. <laughs> um, well, not all. The oldest daughter in New Zealand, she's like that. She, she's an excellent household manager, mother, she's just had a third baby, she breezes through pregnancies, she helps build the house, she makes the garden, she raises the children, she schools them. That is an amazing career, just like being an engineer, being a programmer, being a doctor, being an advocate, whatever. And I can't believe that in 2023, people still connect craft to the female gen gender and assume that you are a housewife. It doesn't make sense. You know what? In my small little circle, in my small little circle of yarn in South Africa, I can immediately come up with a few names of men who are excellent in knitting and crocheting. Colin Fulhun, he's married, he's got, a, he's got an adult son, he's an avid knitter. Johan Bays, he's a paramedic, he loves machine knitting. That guy can do on a knitting machine what I can't even think of doing, and I had knitting machines. Marnie Creel, he's a, um, a retired pharmacist, he's, he weaves, he spins, he does um, bobbin lace, I am in awe when I look at what he does. Um, Jean, I'm not going to try to pronounce Jean's surname. It's a French surname. Skisote. He's a crocheter. He's in the police force. Why is this still a gender thing? It's so funny. And if you go and you look at um, careers occupations of people that excel in knitting or crochet or quilting, whatever, few of them are actually stay-at-home persons. Few. So, 
it would be interesting to see the podcasters and the people who follow my podcast specifically. Tell me, what do you do? What is your occupation? It would be so interesting to find out. So where did I come from? Well, my career started off in Nissan, South Africa, car manufacturer. I was in the automotive industry most of my life. I love cars and I love trucks. My last employer before I went out of the automotive industry was a truck manufacturer. Um, I went to Japan to negotiate warranty conditions on the gearboxes for the UD trucks in South Africa. Um, and some, uh, it started off with admin and then it grew into project management. In Nissan, South Africa, I ended up by being a, a project manager. I planned the introduction of new cars into the marketplace. The last two models I worked on before I left Nissan was the um, Uno Rio and the Sentra Sabre. That's many years ago. And in the truck world, I did warranties. At one stage, I was considering doing a mechanic course, but I never got around to it. <laughs> and then I went into business analysis. So I'm still a business analyst now. Um, I stopped it for a few years when I had Jan in a barn, but then I went back into it. So tell me what is your occupation? So why am I only doing this video at 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning? Well, my car decided to break down in January. <sighs> It's the longest month ever and it cost me a pretty penny to have it fixed because this car is special so let me tell you what happened with this car when i was working still before i had yarn in a bond i had a, a hyundai i20 zippy little car for the city and my husband had um, a bucky a pickup as you call it in america pickup truck a bucky he had a Ford Ranger bucket. And then I opened yarn in a barn. And then the t-shirt yarn came. So the first few times he drove with me down to Durban, which is about a seven hour drive. And we would pick up a t-shirt yarn. And it was like a, a once a month trip. So we did it over a weekend. But the t-shirt yarn took off like a rocket. And it pretty soon became a bi-weekly thing. And he couldn't just go with me anymore. He didn't, we just couldn't fit it in. So I said to him, you know what, I'll go alone. By that time, he had bought um, a two, a double axle trailer to get the t-shirt out. So on a Monday morning, I would get up at like one o'clock and I would get one worker to go with me. It would be a female because I had females that rolled the t-shirt down for me. So... T-shirt yarn is still a big thing. I saw it again this week, and that's why I'm actually talking about it. What is T-shirt yarn? Okay, you get fancy brands like um, Tarn, um, Spaghetti. Um, there's one from overseas. I think it's Zepaghetti, something like that. Those are fancy yarns that are made specifically to be sold as T-shirt yarn. But the stuff I had, when they manufacture textile, this happens in a textile factory where they manufacture um, knitwear, um, t-shirting, t-shirting. So the t-shirt is actually knitted, just so that you know. Go take your t-shirt and look closely and you will see that it's actually knitted. So in this factories where they manufacture the t-shirting, the they it goes through the knitting section where the fabric is knitted and then it goes into the next section where these um, textile is spread out and dyed or printed and it gets rolled up and when it's rolled up into a roll of fabric, the ends, the self edges, get cut neatly and they call it stentering. So the T-shirt yarn that I sold was the offcut of the stentering process. It's the little strips that came down on the end to get a firm, neat roll of T-shirting. So we got the stuff in bales. Um, and because it was um, 
a waste product for the manufacturing company. These stuff were shoved into plastic bags and thrown out into a yard or into a trailer or into a container or into a, a factory room that they didn't use much. So it was a freaking filthy job, I kid you not. Okay, so one o'clock on a Monday morning, me and my worker would go down. Take the trailer, take the bucky, and off I go to Durban. Seven hour drive. Um, by the time the factory opened, I was standing at the gate waiting. Then they would say to us, okay, there's all the, the rubbish. Go sort out what you want. And we would have to weigh every bale that we take because we paid by um, weight. I packed my own trailer because the workers in the factory just threw on the stuff. They couldn't care whether the trailer was balanced or um, optimal use of space or whatever. So I packed my own trailer. So it was physical hard work from about 7 in the morning to about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Then we would have full load. The bucky would be full, the back of the bucky, and the double axle trailer would be full. Now, let me tell you, I was told by my husband, you illegally, I was only allowed to carry 750 kilos on the trailer because although it had a double axle, it didn't have um, brakes on the trailer. So 750 kilos was the legal weight that I could carry on the trailer. Um, I never kept count of what was going on. I filled the space. <laughs> My record was I, <laughs> I drove in one day. The bucky was full. It had a canopy on, luckily. No, it didn't have a canopy. I'm talking hogwash. It didn't have a canopy. The bucky's back was full. It had um, netting over, which we secured with ropes so that nothing would fall off. And the same thing on the trailer. The trailer would be packed and it would have netting over and we would secure that with ropes. My record was 1.6 ton that I came home with. When I, I usually got home. We left the factory at about 1 o'clock in the day on a Monday. And then we would stop at Montrose and get some um, lunch, pies and whatever. And then we would take the drive back to Pesora, seven hours back. So we got home like seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, depending on the traffic and the weather conditions and the number of trucks on the road or whatever. I can remember when I drove in with that 1.6 ton, my husband was waiting for me outside and when I came through the gate, he grabbed his head like this. He said to me, what the f did you do? <laughs> I had 1.6 time. That was good times. So what happened then? I drove that bucket to pieces. That bucket was a workhorse and eventually um, I stopped with a t-shirt yard. And the reason I stopped was I bought this from a Muslim man. And he just came out one day and he said to me, I'm no longer supplying you. And I said, why not? He says, you're a white Christian woman. I will only supply my Muslim brothers. And I was absolutely shocked because I supplied a lot of um, Muslim men who had yarn and textile haberdashery shops in South Africa. But yeah, so be it. it was his choice. Um, I found another place for a little while, but they didn't have much stock. And they had actually stopped manufacturing the t-shirting. They were no longer doing that. So when I cleared out all their waste, that was it. I, I had no more. And I at that stage, I just wasn't into trying to find another one. Places like that are scarce in South Africa. They are few and far between. I only know of the three where you could get. And the one is very far from me. It's in the Cape. And they didn't want a courier to me. And, and besides, the courier would have cost me a kidney, never mind an arm and a leg. So then we stopped. So my husband decided to sell the bucky. And he... My husband is a funny guy. He really is. He's the most interesting person I know. So he bought two cars without seeing them in person. And he bought them in Peter Maritzburg online on a trade-in with the Bucky. He just said to me, we're going to drive down to Peter Maritzburg. We're trading the Bucky in for two other cars. I said, what are you buying? He says, no, I'm being, I'm buying 
an old BMW and a small buggy for the farm just to move the animal feed around and whatever. And I said, okay, fine, I'll drive with you. So off we went to Peter Maritzburg with the Ford Ranger buggy. And we got to Peter Maritzburg and there was this black BMW. She wasn't new. She was a 2008 model and we bought her in 2016. So she was already eight years old. But she is a BMW 650i and she's pitch black and she's sexy. I got out of my, uh, the bucky and I looked at that car and I thought, boy, oh boy, you bought yourself a sexy pair of wheels. You really did. I still had the i20 and um, signed all the paperwork, did everything that we had to do. The guy gave him the two keys of the two cars. And um, my husband gave me the BMW skis and he said, here's your car driver home. And I nearly fell over with shock. I was like, what? Are you serious? I said, but I have the R20. He said, yes, that's mine now. I'm going to drive her to work and back. She's lighting fuel consumption. So we called the car Katrain. And um, I have never been emotional about a car like I am about Katrain. She is just Katrain is something else. If you if you've seen her, if you've been in her, you will know Katrain. She's the shit. <laughs> and um, she's paid off. We paid off a long time ago. I mean we've had her now for from 20, yeah, we bought her in 2016, and it's now 2023, so seven, eight years we've had her. She's paid off long ago, and I just don't want to sell her. Every time he comes to me and he says to me, look at this car. This car is so much lighter in fuel consumption than Katrain. And I said to him, yeah, but um, with the kilos I'm driving in a month, that fuel consumption saving doesn't justify the installment on a new car. And then he says, yeah, you're right. And he lets me go. <laughs> so... Katrain had a leak, so we took her in and she was in hospital for two weeks and we went this morning to go and get her. So I am in such a good mood, my car is fixed, I had to drive my husband's bucky for two weeks, which he replaced eventually, not too long ago, he, he sold the i20 and he got himself a new Ford Ranger. And I don't like driving around with that bucky, I really don't, I like my sexy car. Okay, so why did I tell you about my car? I have no idea. But anyway, uh, tell me about your occupation. I would like to know. Okay, so when we took the drive down to Cape Town, I took two bags of that um, Madame Tricot that I was working with so much last year, and I knitted one sweater for my daughter-in-law in the Cape. I used the Plain Jane crew neck pattern, and I made it with long sleeves, that's what she wanted. So I knitted that on the way down and while we were on holiday, I completed that for her as a Christmas present. And I was planning on knitting um, uh, another crew neck, plain Jane, for myself on the way back with the next one. But my, my daughter-in-law's mother she tests for me occasionally and she couldn't find the yarn in the cape. And she said to me, I so much want to have a pack of this yarn, but I can't find it. And I said, oh, well, I have an extra one in my suitcase that I was planning to knit on the way back. If you like the color, you can take it over. So she promptly bought my yarn. So I had nothing on the way back. So I had to go find yarn uh, somewhere in Cape Town. Now, I don't know all of the yarn shops in Cape Town. And I found out about one when I was already back that I should have known about when I was there. But anyway, I found one little shop at Eden on the Bay, something like that, 
Yeah, then eaten on the bank. Yeah, small shop, not too much. But um, what I found there was L cotton. This is manufactured by Sapritex in South Africa. Now I'm not a big Sapritex fan because when I had my own shop, I found the guy that was the I don't know if he was an area manager or rep or what he was. Not a very nice person. Let's just leave it at that. So I never stocked their product. I refused. So, and I didn't like our Premier Cotton. That is discontinued. It was a very hard mess rice cotton. It wasn't nice for garments, in my opinion. I know there are other people who love it. I don't. But this is a new one that they've brought out. It's not mercerized. And it's extremely soft. Very soft. And very nicely drapey. And you know the best part about this. Every ball is packed like that. With this little strand of yarn. Now look at this. This strand of yarn is tucked in here under the label. Now check this out. <laughs> you don't have to dig to get a center pool ball. <laughs> I love it. I do. Okay, so in the car on the way back, believe it or not, I had my tablet on my lap and I started a lace pattern. Now, I originally wanted to do this pattern with Moya Shimmer. The Moya Shimmer is now still in the drawer because I didn't have it with me. So I will have to think up another project for the Moya Shimmer because the color of that is still fine. But anyway, so um, this is still in the making. It's far from finished. I still have to do the sleeves and the ribbing around the neck and also the finishing. So it's a bit messy. So the front of the... Um, the top is just plain stocking stitch, but you can see the back is nicely laced. It's a beautiful little lace pattern. And then where you split between the body and sleeves, the lace start creeping towards the front. So there you can see if I turn it over, it starts creeping towards the front. The, walk, the, the lace is walking around the body of the, um, the garment. And I love it. It's so soft and so drapey it's really re I'm very impressed and the best part about it is the price I was shocked to see how cheap it was quite nice and very well colored you must just make sure that you get a full pack or check the um, dialogue numbers to get balls that come from the same dialogue so I got 10 balls from the same dialogue and you can't see where I started in your ball not at all it's perfectly colored. Obviously, it's a solid color being a factory color. Now, I don't love solid colors too much. I really love hand dyed stuff that's semi solid or variegated, but anyway. So, this one, I, what's the day today? Oh, it's the 21st already. I don't know whether I'm going to have it finished this month still. If I don't, it will be early next month. Um, because the pattern is still being tested and I still got to finish mine and arrange photos and have the, pet, the pattern um, read by my technical editor. So that's going to take a while. So I'm a bit late with my monthly pattern this month, but it's January. Well, please forgive me. Okay, so coming up, the uh, pattern for the log cabin patchwork is completed. I am going to check it tomorrow and send it off for tech editing. So the kits for the log cabin patchwork cull will be available in February from Moya. That cull is made with um, Moya cotton decay. I will put a few photos on after the video for you to see. It is beautiful even if I have to say so myself so this it's a blanket that you can make in various sizes because it consists of four big blocks if you only want to make one block you have a baby blanket if you make two blocks it's nice for 
a single bed. But if you make four, you've got a massive blanket that can go over a queen size bed. These blocks are done in a log cabin fashion. So you have a little block that you start with. You do one on that side, one on this side, one on this side, one on that side. But we've cheated so that it doesn't look like a log cabin. You will, you will see, when you see the, the blanket, you will realize what I'm trying to tell you. It is amazing. And as always, Moya has put together for us the nicest, nicest of colorways. There are quite a few to choose from. I know there's a blue one and there's a green one and there's one with neutral colors and there's one with pinks and purples. And I think it's six. Um, and there's one with boho colors. Mine, you know, look at my glasses bright and cheerful colors and they all look equally as beautiful so i'm very excited about the color i haven't done a color in a long time the last one that i did was the celtic knots so yeah it's it's time and um years ago astrid started doing my um interlocking patterns and then I did a designer course for people who were interested and Astrid did the course and her designs are absolutely phenomenal. If you love interlocking and you haven't yet gone to Astrid's interlocking group, you have to go. That girl is next level. It's actually gone to the point where I look at her stuff and I think, I don't think I will ever design another interlocking blanket because Astrid is just, she's gone for the stars and I think she's sitting on the moon. She is so good and so creative with it. But, and what Astrid does, and that's something I never wanted to do, is to make the interlocking blanket all in one piece. I preferred the loose blocks. It was more manageable for me. But Astrid has gone and she's done one block project massively. And her designs are amazing. And her success gave me the idea that I should now look for the next person to, you know, give them the ropes and help them to get going in the design world. And helping me with Lock Cabin Patchwork is Marizan Fora. Marizan is young, but my goodness, she's got talent and she's got so much potential. So um, towards the end of the project, I think the last three or four blocks I gave to Marizan to design. And she did. <clears throat> I'm overlooking. I'm overseeing. Don't worry. And she also designed the border. So then the pattern came back to me and I'm checking everything. So the pattern will still be sold by me on Ravelry. But Marizan will um, be credited in the pattern and she will share in the income of the pattern, obviously. So I'm hoping that this will give her this much to get going because she's got so much potential. So I had, um, what shall we call her? An assistant designer, a guest designer? I don't know. Let's call her an assistant designer. And that was Marizan. Very nice. So much potential. So I can't wait for this cowl to launch. The cowl is starting on the 1st of March. And the kits will be available from where in from February onwards. Now, if you are one of my Patreon subscribers. Now, let me first talk about Patreon for the guys that don't know. Patreon is a platform where you can support artists by a monthly subscription. Now, on my Patreon, it's $3, and the tier is called Living the Slow Life tier, and people that subscribe there are committed to just give me $3 a month to fund my yarn and to keep me going in the designing. So, <clears throat> I can't promise them any content. I've, I've shared every tutorial I could think of sharing on Patreon already. So all of that tutorials are there for them to go through when they want to. Most of it is crochet. But I don't have more content to share. The people that are on Patreon give me $3 a month purely 
to fund my yarn hobby and to keep me designing. And in turn, I give them my patterns for free, normally. If I release two patterns in a month, one will be free and one will be half price. But they, for the $3 they put in, they normally get $5 worth of value in a month. So, with the lock cabin patchwork cull, other people will pay for the pattern, $5. But you will get the pattern for free. Plus, you will also get a substantial discount on the kit. How's that? So, if you can find $3 in a month to throw my way to keep me in the designing thing, then please subscribe to my Patreon. I will give you the link at the bottom. And there's a whole lot of interesting stuff you can go through on Patreon, but um, there's no new content being posted except for free patterns. I think I've said it all. And I think I've said a lot. So, yeah. I haven't got a name for this madam yet. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to call her. So, maybe we should have a name competition again. I'll post for that. Don't post it in the comments here. I'll make a post on my Ilona Slow Life Creations page. Not the group, the page. Go there and give me a suggestion for the name. When you see the post, it will only be after she's finished. Um, let me show you the lace up close. Maybe that will spark your interest a little bit. But I need a name for her. She's not a plain Jane. Everything. But there's nothing plain about her. She's beautiful. So she needs a name. And then she will be out in February. And... Then I'm going to take the Moya Shimmer and I'm going to start with something else. I don't know what yet. I'm still thinking. Yeah. And I'm playing with an idea in my head, but I can't make my mind up, you know. I only wear merino socks. And I have many pairs. I think I have seven or eight pairs. I don't know. But I am in the mood for knitting socks. And I don't know why. Maybe I should design a sock series. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. And I also want to do another blanket. I want to do a blanket for our bed. But we are on a king size bed. So it's massive. So I don't want to do it in one piece. And I can't make up my mind what to do. I really can't. What I would like to do is to do another air and caress knitted blanket. Look, that blanket. Is, I still use it in my house, but it's a double bed size. It's on the spare bed. It's got the nicest texture. I can remember I knitted it in 2016. I was still knitting it when my son got married. We traveled down to the gap while I was knitting the Erin Caress blanket and I knitted it in strips. The whole blanket is cables, different cables. There wasn't one repeat. So every panel had a cable that went up and you could make it the length you want. So I gave you the repeats for a baby blanket and for um, a lap blanket and for uh, a full length bed. And then the the width of the cables, the moment you had the width you wanted for a single bed, a three-quarter bed, a double bed, queen, king, whatever, then you stopped. Uh, you just didn't do the rest of the cables. And I knitted that with a double strand of Moya Caress. I don't even know if they still sell Caress. I really hope they do. Um, if I ever knit a blanket again, I will do it again. With Moya Caress held double. I really would. I remember I knitted it on a 7mm needle. It was the most satisfying knit ever. I love that blanket. I'm so peed that it doesn't fit on my bed. It's it's too small. I really but I was crazy then. I think I lost my marbles. I knitted that blanket in natural. Try to keep a blanket in natural clean with a husband 
and dogs in the house. Not possible. I had him on the bed for a month and I phoned Donna from Colourspan and I said, Donna, I need help. And she said, send it to me. And I sent her that blanket and she coloured it for me. The entire big blanket, she coloured it for me. I can remember that blanket took 84 balls of yarn. It was a lot. So it was quite heavy. How much is 84 balls? 42, so it's just over 4 kilos, 4.2 kilos of yarn that went into that blanket. But man, she's a beauty. And you know the nicest thing about it? You can chuck her into the machine and into the dryer and she comes out fat and fluffy like brand new. Back on the bed. I want to do that again. I really want to. Maybe I should just bite the bullet and do it. If Moya Caress is still on the market, that is what I will use. It's a textured cotton. Moya Caress, I refer to it as a winter cotton. For us in South Africa, our winters are not that cold. Well, not where I am. I know when you're in Sutherland, it's a different story. But where I am, winters are mild. We seldom get to zero temperatures. It just doesn't happen. Um, so I refer to it as a winter cotton because it's got a lot of places where air pockets are, are caught in the yarn, giving it a bit of insulation. So it's, it's warmer than just straight cotton. It's a straight cotton and a cotton slab that are plied. Ugh, it's the nicest yarn. I'm going to check their website right now. If they are still making um, Moya Caress, I think I should do another knitting knit a long project for my bed yeah maybe I should do that what do you think anyway I've spent a lot of time with you today I will see you again in the third weekend of February and by then I will be 54 I'm having my birthday on the 7th of February and I can't wait. The older I get, the more I love my birthdays. I never want to be 20 and confused again. Thank you very much. I'll take menopause. I'll take Cooper's drip. I'll take everything. I just don't want to be young and confused again. The older I get, the more I like myself and the less I care what other people say. Yeah. Have a blessed month. I hope your slow Saturday is going to be as good as mine. We're not going anywhere, we're not getting people, so my husband and I are going to have a lacquer bra and we are going to suss out the playlist because I'm currently building a playlist for his 60th birthday party in April and we are going to have one heck of a hippie party. Watch. I'm, I'm going to get myself a hippie outfit. I'm a hippie at heart. So I won't have long hair by then. Can you see how long my hair has grown? I'm growing my hair now. I don't know to where, to where I can manage it. But I'll get myself a bandana or something, sexy bandana or a headscarf or something. I'm going to go full out hippie and we're going to have one hell of a party in April. I'll see you next month. Have a blessed month. And let me know in the comments what is your occupation. See you next month.